is, how did you reach your level of success on YouTube? Harsh, would you like to go first? Yeah. Uh, I never planned to get uh, so much successful in YouTube. I never planned it. It happened by chance. I just wanted to do acting, so I made uh, funny videos and uh, fiction videos and relatable videos. So it happened by chance uh, from creating a video to a, uh, being an influencer. So it's all about chance. <laughs> okay. Yes, For me, uh, one day I had a new idea about creating a video uh, uh, on how to be beautiful with no, without makeup and the video, the video went viral and... Uh, how, how soon did it go viral? Uh, it reached uh, out one million in one week, I guess. That's wow. So that was uh, all over the trending page in Middle East and North Africa. So uh, my channel got bigger and bigger and I had to work hard to maintain the growth and prevent it from dropping. So we're here now. That's awesome. And how did you maintain that after you've had one big viral hit immediately? It, how did you make sure that you yeah, were going to take I created a video constantly and come up with new ideas and not just copying other creators or other YouTube videos. So I guess I had the chance to to have a big a big channel now. Yeah, and, it looks yeah. Cool. That's and it. Tiffany, what about you? Mine was completely by chance as well. Um, I'm a fitness coach and trainer by profession, and I had a, own my own studio in Mexico. I actually lived in Mexico for a while. Wow. And people were visiting the studio, and they were saying, oh, how can we continue to work out with you, you know, after we leave the studio? And I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll put some workouts on YouTube so that we can be yeah. an international group. So that's how I got started, and then it just took off from there. Very yeah. cool. So where would you all say that you get your inspiration from when creating your content? I got inspiration from my mom. Really? Yeah, okay. but she's a housewife, she <laughs> does so much. Love that. Uh, being a housewife, she, uh, she handled my dad, my sister, me. So I Good get, woman. she's my superwoman. <laughs> yeah. So I get inspiration from my mom. Okay, and what about you? Mine is just from uh, social media, I see what is trending on social media platforms. I ask my followers if they have a new idea that they want to watch. And I... I I'm sorry. <laughs> how, so how do you do that? How do you interact with your followers and get what, you know, what they're chasing after or what I, they're interested I in? I use social media features like Instagram story. Now YouTube also have uh, the story feature. And uh, I can ask them a question via my stories. I can go live on social media. So interacting with, with my followers is so important for me to get them engaged. Uh, it's not all about the number of followers, it's more about connecting with your followers. Absolutely. Follow so this is always. how I come up with my ideas. I just interact with my followers, see what they are interesting and watching and what they need. And sometimes I come up with new ideas. Yeah. I use my creativity for that. And that's it. That's it for me. Awesome. And Tiffany? Um, I get my inspiration from my fans and followers, and that's because when I do the workouts, really what gets me motivated and pumped up is when they write back and they've gotten good results from it, or they've changed their lives, or they were able to fit into this certain dress, or they just feel yeah. good about themselves. When I do that, it makes me want to do more. When I read that, I'm like, okay, so what can we do like, to continue to make you feel that way and look that way? So that keeps me pumped up on a regular Absolutely. basis. Absolutely, and that's so rewarding, because you're actually so changing rewarding. someone's health and wellness. And yes. That's an incredible thing. Or you're making them laugh, or you're making them extra beautiful. So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's fantastic. Um, so. When speaking with brands, how do you define yourself? And would you say that you are a creator or an influencer or both? Uh, I uh, usually don't talk to brands. My manager does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when I uh, initially stay at, when I was at, uh, in making videos, so I al yeah. always say I I'm an influencer. Because if you can in influence public, if you can make them download something just right. buying your words, so you are an influencer. So I always used to say I'm an influencer. So I started from being a creator yeah. uh, and move to in, being an inf influencer. Okay, that's a really interesting concept of how, how you think about yeah. it. And um, what about you, For sir? me, I consider myself as a content creator at first that became uh, an influencer. Yes. Uh, brands reach out to me to create a content for them as a content creator mm -hmm. and they are reaching out to me to, um, to target my audience as an influencer, so oh. both, both. Both? Yeah. 
And what about you, Tiffany? I use the creativity of my content um, to influence others. So because I do working out, I mean, it's something that you do on a regular basis. You have to be creative with it. You can't Absolutely. just do the same workouts. I don't copy no. other people. I, I do it myself every day. So I make it interesting. I do workouts with towels and chairs and mats and all these things that you can use at home. And that influences other people's lives because they can take it into their own lives and, and make, make it, it theirs. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like on the brand side, we kind of refer to you guys as both you know, an influencer and a creator, because whether you're on the micro level or the macro level, you still have some sort of a push and pull with the audience that are watching you on a daily basis, mm -hmm. and you're still creating that content every day, usually, as well. Um, so how would you all say that you've transformed your passion into your brand? Uh, my uh, mainly passion was acting. So uh, I was doing my college, I, I was in second year, so I told my parents that I want to do YouTube. So they always supported me. They said, uh, they said, if you want to do YouTube, yeah. you continue. If you want to drop your studies, you can drop. We are supporting you. So uh, they played very big role uh, in, uh, in uh, the big role in where I am sitting. They played very big role because they told me to follow your passion. If you, are, if you always follow your passion, you will be successful. Yeah, so, very uh, It was by chance. I followed my passion and here I'm sitting with so many talented people. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, sir. Um, it came naturally, I guess. When I first started, my purpose was not to create a brand. Uh, I was just sharing my uh, makeup tips, beauty tips, as a professional makeup artist with, my, with the others. And then I got the chance to get so many people watching, so I became uh, an influencer and a brand naturally. Yeah. That's it. Okay. And Tiffany? So my passion is working out, and I know all different forms of working out, but what I really like um, is to focus on the feminine. Uh, so the okay. feminine body type that's curvy and strong and elegant. And so I use that um, to sort of transform a different style of fitness, and it builds fem esteem. So I want, my goal is not for women to have one particular look of fitness, but to love who they are and to love their bodies. So yeah, I really... I use the form of fitness, not just to make you look a certain way, but to make you feel a certain way. And that's awesome. Passion. Like, start from the within and then have it all Yeah, well, but you don't have to look one way to be right. fit, you know, because exactly. women come in so many different shapes and sizes, and I really want them to love their bodies as they are and to celebrate the feminine energy of the fitness part, yeah. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, how do you guys separate your regular life from your online persona? Given uh, that, you know, I'm sure you all have a camera or a cell phone on you at all times. I'm, I'm not able to balance my personal life and work life together. <laughs> okay. I, I wish I can because my parents always complain about that you are not giving me time. Yeah. My friends complain that you are not giving us time. So, in future, I hope I'll balance it. So, nowadays I'm not able to balance because I came, uh, I was shooting for six days and then I came here uh, without meeting my parents, but uh, just meeting for a few hours. Yeah. So I came for the flight and now I'm staying here for three days. So I hope in future I'll balance, but right now I'm so bad at balancing my online life and yeah. personal life. So in future I hope I, I'm able to. And get better at that. Yeah. yeah. More FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> So, you sir? so we don't balance, I guess. It's uh -huh. so hard to balance. Um, sometimes I take one or two days off yeah. offline so I can take care of my family, uh, get uh, the time to pass the time with them. Um, but I don't balance. I'm always <laughs> online, always uh, managing my emails, my com yeah. responding to my comments, my messages. So we're, I'm always online. It is a full-time job, and a lot of people don't think, a lot of times you're working, and before you're working, you're working before you're working, or you're working after you're working, you're always working, so you have to separate. I think in order to be successful as an influencer, you have to realize because it's your job, you have to stop working at some point. Right, So exactly. you have to make a cutoff time, which cut I try and do line. in the evening, like that's it, or take at least one day off a week where you're not focusing on, you know, being present for other people. You're being right. present in your own life. Yeah. Exactly. I think it's just healthier, right, overall. Yeah. The mental self yeah. and You have to mind refill body. your cup. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I think we have time for one more question. And so my final question for you all is, 
how do you feel you've converted your social media following into a business? Because essentially, influencers are all their own mini startups. And I don't think people always realize that. But you know, you're doing the tech, you're looking at data, you're looking at your demographic, you're finding out what info that you need to push out to your audience. So how would you say you guys have moved over into having a business and not just a fun you know, social aspect? Uh, when I started making videos, I didn't even knew how to earn money from videos. Right. I never knew that uh, videos can uh, give me uh, bread to eat. Right, like a proper so, like ad set. Yeah, my parents always uh, say, uh, in, in Hindi, they used to say, uh, I, I used to uh, make videos, uh, chunni, like you know, yeah, uh, with a the scarf. Indian woman wears scarf. <laughs> right. And uh, so my mom used to say, kya chunni pehen ke video bana hai? Matlab, why are you making uh, videos Wearing a being scarf. a girl? Yeah. So <laughs> I used to play character for girls and boys both. both. Right. So uh, she said, she, you'll earn, but I said, I have passion. So she said, if you have passion, you can. Yeah. So but she believed do you it. think? Yeah, she believed, but she, her question was, uh, can you earn from this? So I never knew, she never knew. Yeah. By chance, uh, I came to know about sponsors, uh, monetization, YouTube monetization. So I started learning from that. Yeah. So initially it was few coins. <laughs> <laughs> and then it slowly goes up. And now a yeah. few more coins. <laughs> awesome. And do you, sir? As I said, uh, it came naturally. Mm -hmm. So um, brands, we're starting to con con contact me, yeah. and I start. I started doing this as a business. And Did it happen right away? Because your video went no, viral. No, no, it didn't. Okay, it didn't. so like slowly over time. Yeah, slowly. Because when I when I uploaded that video, uh, I didn't have so much content. So yeah, uh, it was in the beginning of my uh, my channel. So right. It came slowly and surely. Slowly but surely. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's perfect. And you, Tiffany? Um, one of the things that I would recommend for all the influencers out there is to leverage your popularity and to make sure that you're continuing to service your fans. So for me, um, you know, people are asking, so if you think about when you want to work out, you have so many questions like, what do I do for this? How do I lose my waist? How do I do my butt? What should I eat? It's so many different questions that yes. they're asking. And I didn't want to give them just sort of superficial answers. Right. So I use the popularity from the YouTube channel to create an online gym. And in that okay. online gym, when people join, they actually get like the full food plan and the daily workout and everything is a lot more comprehensive. Um, so I can still give some to the YouTube fans and the social media following, but I can actually service them so much more by using that as a segue to another business, which I think everyone should really think about doing when you have that popularity to uh, create another revenue stream for yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many different ways you can, yeah. right, as soon as you enter the social world. Yeah. Well, I think that's all we have time for. So thank you so much. Thank you and very thank much. Thank you all of you.